Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yasudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. Today we will look at a treatment option for a common condition called keratosis pilaris. The information is from an article published in Clinical and Experimental Dermatology earlier this year. Keratosis pilaris is seen frequently in dermatology clinics and up to 80% of adolescents and 40% of adults in the general population may have it. It is caused by abnormal plugging of the hair follicle, which results in scattered inflammatory spots, mostly on the outer aspects of the proximal extremities, that is the outer aspect of the arms and sometimes the thighs as well. It can also affect the face and trunk on occasions. It is also associated with atopic eczema and the underlying mechanism of keratosis pilaris is not precisely known. It may be genetic or inherited in at least half of those who have it. Mutations in the filaggrin gene have been implicated in its development. I've already done a video on how the filaggrin gene mutation could cause dry and sensitive skin and predispose to food allergies. So do look at it for more information. The treatment of keratosis pilaris usually starts with topical agents, topical keratolytics like urea and salicylic acid ointments and regular application of moisturizers. Topical retinoids can also be used, but they can irritate the skin. Laser treatment may be helpful, but it's difficult to access and also tends to be expensive. For refractory and severe cases, treatment with systemic retinoids has been suggested. Despite this recommendation, there are very few studies describing a treatment course of isotretinoin for keratosis pilaris. In the report in the Clinical and Experimental Dermatology, the authors presented a 16-year-old girl with chronic biopsy-proven keratosis pilaris. The patient was otherwise healthy. Previous treatments included moisturizers, tacrolimus 0.1% ointment and steroid creams, but this did not confer much benefit. Because of the extensive and refractory nature of the patient's condition, a trial of isotretinoin was commenced. The patient was started on isotretinoin half a milligram per kg body weight per day for four months and this was followed by a reduced dose for a further two months. The total was six months of treatment. The patient demonstrated marked improvement after two months on isotretinoin. Further improvement was seen after five months of treatment and this was maintained even two months after the completion of treatment. Isotretinoin is commonly prescribed for acne in dermatology clinics. It is usually started at lower doses and it can be increased up to 1 mg per kg per day, though low doses are sufficient for most young people with acne. Isotretinoin is believed to reduce the keratin in the pilosebaceous unit, which is the cause for both acne and keratosis pilaris. In a sense, it's unblocking the pores in the skin. It should therefore benefit patients with keratosis pilaris just as it does for those who have acne and previous reports confirm it. As in this case, the previous reports suggest a low dose of the medication and this was sufficient to bring about improvement in the skin. Any dose of between 0.2 to 0.5 milligrams per kg per day could be considered for keratosis pilaris based on these reports. Note that most of those who have used it in the past were children between the ages of 7 and 12 years. Here is another report of a 7-year-old girl with keratosis pilaris who responded to oral isotretinoin at a dose of half a milligram per kg body weight per day. The authors suggested continuation of treatment for 6 to 12 months. Using lower doses may also be helpful in preventing any significant adverse effects of oral isotretinoin. So a learning point is that low-dose isotretinoin can be an option for those who have severe or recalcitrant keratosis pilaris. Remember that keratosis pilaris usually tends to improve with age without any treatment. However, in those who have widespread condition or those who have cosmetic concerns, oral isotretinoin could be an option. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for listening and bye.